Hi guys, welcome to another quick video. Um, lots of you are asking about the um, AP1 and AP2 or attacking pressure 1 and 2 graphs that we display. So I thought I'd do a very quick um, video just explaining what they are and how to read them. Um, so I've picked two games at the moment. You can see the two that I've highlighted. Uh, and as you should be aware by now, by using the filters in my games, I can just concentrate on these two games. So the reason I've picked these is, is to just to highlight what we're looking at. So attacking pressure one is based on um, shots and on possession, and attacking pressure two is based on attacks and corners. And combining the two together, <clears throat> what will happen is we can see a picture of the game. So this gives us a, a picture of the attacking intent of both teams throughout the game. So this second one's really interesting. For example, if we look at that, you can see that for long periods of the game, the light blue, the away team has actually been on top for attacking pressure one. And if we look at attacking pressure two, we can see exactly the same. Um, we can also see they've got 71% of the possession and they've had more shots on target and they've had more dangerous attacks. So, you know, more shots off target as well. So the stats, you know, the graphs are backing up what you're seeing in the stats here. Wouldn't very really surprise me if that ended 1-1, one, one, but maybe whilst we're, uh, we're doing this video, it may change. So, you know, don't use these graphs as a single source of truth. Use them in conjunction with the other data that you've got here. Don't use them exclusively. Yes, that paints a nice picture in the first half. You can see that they, obviously the home team scored very, very early. Um, and if we look at that, you can see that the pressure has been building. Um, typically, we look for somewhere around 15 to be an indication of a goal on AP2 and somewhere in the region of 50, 55. So you can see that neither team has actually reached that. Um, I'd like to see this first goal. It was probably something right at the start of the game where someone wasn't concentrating. But, you know, again, as I say, that paints a picture. You can see that from 46 minutes to 71 minutes, actually, the pressure went off a little bit. Um, you can see on AP2 that, you know, the pressure has been dominant and has been building throughout the game. So as I say, wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if that finished 1-1 and um, you know use the stats that here so expected goals you can see you know a roughly one for each team so that tends to back up the thoughts that the home to the away team are likely to score you can also see silk scored first half or second half in there as well so don't use these graphs in isolation use them in conjunction with the other stats that you've got when it's highlighted it means that the total is greater than 55 or the total is greater than 15 so if we look at this other game, slight more interesting game here, we can see there's been ebbs and flows in this in terms of attacking. Um, but what we can see is that when the you know when it went up to 30, there was a goal for the home team. We can see that the away team hasn't really done a lot in there. Second half, again, you can see that pressure's been building, but again, we haven't reached that magic 15. Um, so at the moment, looking at that, looking at the fact we've only had three shots on target in total, you know, <clears throat> not a lot of goals going on only one corner i like to see lots of corners if i think there's going to be a you know a goal you know this is a game i would like i'd probably leave alone this game does interest me a lot i mean look at these corners here you can see that we had eight corners in total we've got 71 percent possession at the moment as i said that's building towards being a, a late goal in that game so use them in conjunction don't use them in isolation this is a picture of one that I took the other day, um, and again, it just illustrates a similar thing, but it's easy for me to see, be, show you, because it's not actually going on and off the screen as it would do in the, in the proper live score app. So here you can see Simba were playing Nadina in Tanzania League, and you can see in terms of pressure, you know, we've had a high of up to 70 in there. We got a goal early on, we've had a dip towards half time, and then we've, you know, we've gone along there. What's interesting, and the reason I pulled this graph is, is how little the away team have done. OK, they are 19th playing the home team first. So don't always look for, you know, peaks, look for troughs as well. This would be a perfect game to, to, to you know, to bet, you know, no clean sheet, for example, for the away, um, sorry, a clean sheet for the away team. Because you can see here there's been very little happening in terms of attacking intent. If we look at the AP2, they had a little bit of a go. But, you know, there's a couple of, of attacks there or maybe it's a few corners. Have we had any corners? No, no corners. So a few attacks there in the second half, but nothing really to speak about. So in terms of, you know, if this was a live game going on now, you would be looking for it to be, you know, the away team not to score. And actually this one finished 2-0. There was a late goal by Simba. Um, and probably rightly so. You know, 11 shots on target. Again, I like to walk, work towards maybe three or four shots on target leading to a goal. So there was definitely a chance of another goal going on there as well. 
so I just thought I'd show you these just so you can see you know don't always use them as the highs but also look at the lows as well because there is opportunities you know and again don't use it in isolation we can see from this graph it was very low in terms of um, shots and you can see here one one you can see here that in terms of you know dangerous attacks and attacks 30 and 95 you know not really a lot going on and certainly no corners okay you can see a little bit of it, as i say a peak here but again you know if this was a game you were looking at and watching you would you would pretty much be sure that the away team would finish on zero and that's exactly what happened so I hope that helps. As I say, it was just a quick video. Lots of you asking how we calculate these. There is an algorithm that uses the data that calculates them. Um, but what we, you know, what they're trying to do is paint a picture of the game. As I say, use that picture, but use it in conjunction with the other statistics. Don't use it in isolation. Use the data that you've got here. Use the last five and ten minutes data to see what's going to happen, as well as the graphs to make your decisions. Don't use them on their own. Um, going back to this pyramids game, we're, st <laughs> we're still on one nil, but we're in the, in the last nine minutes, and I, I might go away and have a look at that one now. But you can see what, you know, again, well, again, it's died off a little bit in the last, but again, we've still got very high pressure in there. If we just have a look at the last five minutes, what have we got? Had seven dangerous attacks in the corners, but we actually had no shots on goal, so maybe we'll leave that one for the time being. But I hope that's been helpful and explains a little bit more about what those um, graphs are for and how to use them. Uh, okay, thank you all. Bye.